Welcome to Thoughts and Teens in Focus. I'm your host, Patricia Tring. Today, I have a very special guest, and we will be doing some talking about corporal punishment, and our guest will be explaining about his book that he wrote on the mailbox syndrome, and that is something that is affecting our community, affecting parents, affecting children, especially parents who um, came from out of the um, another country and have their cultural um, their cultural experience of being a mother being a parent and being the head of the household and such a rapid change that has caused so so much of dramatic dysfunctional um, dysfunctional situation in the home in schools and in the community we have our special guest and he is none other than Mr. Derek or Arjun, I think he is an attorney, um, and he will be telling us some of his experience that he had to share um, dealing with children, dealing with with you know um, children who have been sent to the ACS or taken away by ACS, which is a dramatic experience for any child to go through to be taken away from their home or from their parents. So we're going to welcome Mr. Arjun. And he's going to tell us about his book, The Mailbox Syndrome. Mr. Arjun, welcome to our program. We know that you are not a totter teen, but you are just right. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're just right to make this this um, this topic. And um, seeing that you were an attorney, I'm quite sure that you have a lot of experience how to deal with situation because we believe that corporal punishment is out of anger but you will explain to us how um the corporal pudgeon or spanking a child would not be out of anger well welcome um thank you very much for the welcome um good morning to you and your listeners and viewers um i used to be a tot and teen a long time ago uh this book the mailbox syndrome was prompted by a particular matter I had some time ago involving two parents who lived in Queens with uh, two boys. Uh, the father was a veteran, uh, an army veteran, and the wife was a school teacher. Uh, he had left the army, he had become a school counselor. So both were in education. One of the boys was coming home late, and the father, be, uh, having spoken to the, the, the boy on several occasions, uh, became quite frustrated about the boy's failure to obey him. One evening, the boy came home after seven, and the father hit him. The immediate consequence was that some marks showed up on a boy's um, body. Marks which were seen by the teacher the next day. The teacher reported it to the principal, the principal to ACS, and ACS to the police. So there began a, a criminal and family court matter, which resulted in the father being excluded from the home. The mother was allowed to remain in the family home with the sons. Uh, it was rather traumatic for two persons who were in education, who've never been in trouble, and who felt that by correcting their son, they were doing the right thing. There was a case in court uh, was dragged out for a long time. The father lived in a basement. Uh, he could only talk to the, the wife on the phone, he could not see the children until they went to court after two appearances and he, he was allowed to see the children in a precinct. He objected to that, but that was the only way he could keep in contact with the boys and, and so he did go along with that. But with all of that uh, said, the, the book addresses how your how your life could change and change really badly because the system views what you think to be corrective action 
as abuse. Uh, and this is particularly relevant to, to blacks, especially those from the Caribbean and from the South, who still believe that the rod or the, the paddle is a useful way to correct children who are going the wrong way. And you know, in our community, um, we're faced with certain social ills which demand that black parents parent in a different way. What I mean by that is that if you live in Bedford Style or, or um, Brownsville or East New York or even Hollis where this book uh, was set, you're often faced with drugs, gangs, stabbings, and worst of all, killings. So the, the result is that when your child is coming home late from school, you don't only think about the child playing maybe basketball or hanging out. You think about the child falling victim oh to these God. things. Um, mm -hmm. In this particular instance, a boy was around a gang, mm -hmm. uh, one which was involved in a lot of um, bad activities. And the leader was uh, a fellow by the name of Edge, who had been known to done some horrendous things in the community, but because of the fear of retribution, uh, community residents never, uh, never cooperated with the police. So you had a situation where a 14-year-old boy was with a gang led by a, a leader who was in drugs. Um, um, they were selling guns. They, they were burglarizing homes or robbing people. And the father was fearful that his child with a bright future might fall into the, the jaws of crime and end his promising career. Mm -hmm. And this is what prompted the, the father to act the way he did. Okay. So that is how this book came about because it's not only to that family, but there are many families who um, are experiencing the same type of mailbox syndrome and um, they cannot really um, correct their children. But what I'm saying, if you can't correct your children, the police is correcting them in the worst way. So why is it that the police have the opportunity to to correct them in a hurtful manner and yet still the parents cannot correct them in a rightful manner? Well, you know, that reminds me of um, um, a comment made by a, a friend of mine. He had, um, he, he being a parent, had, had cause to correct his son. Mm -hmm. That led to, I believe, somebody in the home calling the police. Uh, the police came to his home to inquire about what was happening. And uh, they, they, were, they, they were somewhat reluctant to, um, to take any action. But when he was asked um, about what was going on, he told him rather candidly, he said, look, if I don't correct him now, then you will be correcting him. And I don't want that to happen. So they let him go, but it's true. If, if we don't try to plot the path of a turn very carefully, then they will end up in the tentacles of the court system, eventually prison, and a life of wastefulness. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need, to, we need to be proactive. We need to be vigilant parents, especially in the, some of the environments that we that some were children growing up growing up in, uh, these are tough, demanding, and and rather fright, frightful environments. Um, and sometimes talking is not enough. Sometimes you have to resort to spanking, as this parent did, be, because um, he felt that I had done enough in terms of talking 
and I needed to let this boy know Talking that his behavior, his behavior was not acceptable. Yeah. And you know, we are saying, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that the law is saying that children should not be spanked or have corporal punishment. But in the Bible say, do not spare the rod and spoil the child. Right, correct. Corporal punishment is not something that has just started where um, parents of today um, enforcing corporal punishment. Corporal punishment was started from slavery. And parents are, are now trying to correct their children from the things that is going on because actually if the parents do not correct their children, I think they are gone right back into slavery. And the slavery there is jail, the drug house, or to the grave. And the corporal punishment that parents may um, implement is not what they will get in prison, or what they will get being knocked down by the police, or what they will get going to the grave. You, you're absolutely correct. Uh, you, you see, we, we live in a world in which we have concluded that corporal punishment in the home leaves scars that make children dysfunctional, uh, make them angry, make them themselves abusive. But that's not the kind of corporal punishment that this book seeks to um, advocate. Mm -hmm. We don't want corporal punishment that is corrective and that is done in a sensible way, not in an angry, abusive way. Uh, while we might decry some of us um, corporal punishment, I believe it's fair to say that many persons uh, who have come out from those homes have benefited. Whether it be Caribbean, whether it be uh, Southern Blacks, or even up, no, up North, uh, it, it is something that uh, for our grandparents, our parents have used, and it has helped. Mm -hmm. And there have been more successes, I believe, than failures in, the um, in, in homes which, in which the parents have used spanking as a tool to correct, rather than a tool, you know, to abuse as mm -hmm. some parts of society uh, tends to, tend to look at, at corporal punishment. Okay. We have, um, we may say abuse because we can't run away from that. Some um, parents really and truly get in such an anger that they abuse their children very, very tough. Um, we from the Caribbean <laughs> would call our corporal punishment abuse because parents would not make sport to lick you. <laughs> you had a licking and you know that licking will last you for a very long time that we were so afraid and we had to be um, on the P's and Q's. We be on our P's and yeah. Q's so that we can come out to be who our parents would like us to be or mm. who we would like to be. It hasn't killed us. It hurt us. Some of us are angry and say that wasn't right. But at the same time, the things that were occurring and parents had to go through a lot of stress and strain. So when they talk to you once or twice and you don't hear, you get a slap. And that slap will make you know, do not take your eyes to pass your parent. Parents are in control. The parents are the one who got to take care of you. Today, we don't have that. The, pa the children of today know to call the police. Mm. Get parents locked up, get them take away from home, there they become dysfunctional in the community. Child, the children are hurting. They blush out with the anger because they are taken from the home. They are placed into environment that is not conducive for them. They are missing their family. And all these things are, um, are taking place because of lack of corporal punishment or lack of a licking or lack of a, um, a spanking, as we may call it. In not in an abusive way, but in a corrective way. Yeah, well, the, I think that's important. The, the spanking must be in a corrective way. And um, parents ought to avoid hitting a child while the parent is angry. 
uh, when you're angry, you tend not to behave in a rational manner. Uh, you tend to behave in a manner that could be harmful to you, to you yourself. So when you seek to correct a child, it should be done while you are while you're in control of your faculties. You, you, you might be dissatisfied with a child's behavior, mm -hmm. but when you go to, when you, you're about to spank, you need to tell the child why you're doing so. And you also need to tell the child what you expect the child to do as a result of this. Uh, so that the child understands that the purpose of you resorting to using your hands um, against the child, and preferably in the hand, not around the body, preferably around, um, in the hand, um, you let the child know this is why I'm doing this. So that it is clear. Um, I know you're smiling, <laughs> but if you do it in a manner uh, that shows anger and shows utter frustration, then the message of correction might be lost. And I know sometimes uh, in the Caribbean, our parents were upset and, and um, so upset that while they're doing it, they said certain things that they weren't supposed to. My personal experience is that my father, anytime he uh, had inflicted <coughs> corporal punishment on me, he actually told me why he did it. Mm. He had warned me Several about <laughs> what, is in, what his action will be if I didn't um, change my behavior. And before he did it, he told me. Mm. And I, 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 that's the best approach. You have to let a child know, <coughs> excuse me, why you're doing it and what you expect uh, when you do it. <coughs> Anger ought to be, ought to, <coughs> I'm sorry. In a minimum factor. You, know, uh, you should not be angry when you do it. You know, long ago it was, <laughs> you know, I went to a church um, one day and they were talking about the crucifixion of Christ and the licking that, um, that they got that was rendered. And this is an American pastor and he said, you know, long ago when the parents, um, when parents is going to spank you because you won't do something something right he said that mother will put her hands on her hips and said you must <laughs> listen to what i say so he was explaining how the how it, the corporal punishment was yeah they are not beating you and bad but they got a whip and they're telling you one two and every word is a is is a lash and um I think that is the type of punishment that we got from our parents because they were the parents. Because that is the way they will spank you or they get tamron whip or a cane or a cane in school. You had cane. You had to open your hands to get the, the lash or to pull your dress and swipe, swipe. <laughs> swipe, swipe with a wild cane. Yeah. But that was more control children in the school than they have today because we know in our days when we go and we do anything wrong on the street and anybody come and correct uh, have to come to the school and report it you know what you will get so yeah, you have to be on your peace and your cues. additional flogging i i had an experience one time <laughs> um i dashed across the road and the policeman nearly knocked me down with his motorbike he come and he asked me my name. I gave him wrong name. But he did not leave it there. He went to the school. I only looked up and the teacher said, everybody stop working, work, <laughs> and take a look at this policeman. <laughs> I know it was me. You recognized him. He, he didn't recognize me, but I ducked on the desk. <laughs> I ducked and all the chairs to just cover me up because, you know, that know that when the policeman think and that was the time that the policeman kept looking down the road for me and i had to be hiding all the time that was the type of relationship you had with the police and students and i didn't do anything wrong it's just that i run across the road without looking to see what was coming and that was the the the, the corporal punishment and i was scared to death well you know i was scared to death that's a typical example of what um 
I think it was Hillary Clinton that said um, it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. um, indeed, the village did raise a child. Um, mm -hmm. Your neighbors, your teachers, um, friends, relatives, you, whenever you did something wrong, it could have been reported not only by um, the neighbor, but a friend, a relative, and y your mother and father would um, mm -hmm. would would reprimand you, and yeah. if necessary, spank you. But but you know that we've moved away from that large because we live in uh, larger mm -hmm. environments, and and so we don't have that closeness. Mm -hmm. ne nevertheless. It does not mean that we should shirk our responsibilities to our children at home. That is to uh, disregard the the need to bring them up properly and uh, and leave that responsibility to teachers or to their friends. It is our responsibility, first and foremost, to ensure that our children are brought up the proper way. And the fear of a child calling 911 should not deter a parent. Mm -hmm. If you're doing the correct thing with your child, uh, the authorities aren't going to do anything. I, I believe, actually, that um, the authorities would like to see parents be more proactive with children. There are some officials who react in in a in a in a way that shows they're not sensitive to what's going on in these communities, and in fact, this is why I call the book the mailbox syndrome. Mm -hmm. the, the, these these um, officials, while they might be aware of all the conditions um, that might exist in these communities that lead parents to be, behave the way they do, you know, the drugs and so on and so forth. They, however, ignore the impact of these conditions on a parent's thinking because they don't live in these communities. And those conditions don't affect them, nor their friends, uh, nor their friends' children. And, 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 and so when they're faced with a, a case that involves a parent reacting they tend to say they tend not to not to be sensitive, and and this is why I call it the mailbox syndrome. You know, having the being being ignorant of particular social conditions that might impel a parent to use um, corporal punishment um, in an attempt to correct the child. Um, before we go, you know, um, we talking about corporal punishment, and I remember long ago to when parents spank you, and real spanking. And sometimes you run and you go to the police station. The police there will listen to you quite patiently and everything. And then the police say, okay, let's go to your parents. I remember <laughs> my brother did that. And when the policeman came, he talked and he said, you know, you got to listen and thing and so. And when the policeman finished, the policeman said, okay, bring the letter. So he had a double punishment because the policeman did not leave there until he got another licking. And he said, you do not come to the station when your parents talk to you. You have to stay there and you have to listen. You understand me? So that was the type of thing that long ago, when you call the police and you think, say, well, okay, the police come in to arrest your parents, the police come in to make certain that you get another trashing. So that was the type of, 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 of um, community... Um, yeah, again, it's an example of um, the village raising the child. I mean, we, we're not enemies in the process of bringing mm -hmm, up our children, mm -hmm, but we're mm -hmm. all Together. colleagues and trying to make sure they go the right way, the parents, the police, the social workers, the teachers. Uh, and, and, and that's the way it ought to be. So. Uh, we, we ought to look at this as, uh, as, as, uh, as one of the methods, mm -hmm. one of the methods that we should be, uh, that we should use in trying to ensure that our children become decent, productive, and successful human beings. Okay. I'm sorry that we got to cut you off because this, this talk can need more, more, more. Uh, we need to get more deeper into this um, 
into this book and to really um, talk more about it because there are cultural um, cultural experience that is needed to be um, implemented and I know that if we if more books like these are written that parents can have an idea what it's all about to parenting because today we don't have parents we have children who are parenting children unfortunately, um, unfortunately we have parents who are um, are parenting children and that is the, the problem that we are getting in our society because um, they, they don't have much experience and they don't have the patience they don't have the tolerance to understand their children and because of that the policemen take the police or the government have the opportunity of taking away the children and it's not that the children who are taken away they get children but they felt the abuse and they put back the abuse on the children mm -hmm. so you know this is to show that if our parents take more our grandparents right now we are asking grandparents to take responsibility of the children so that at least they could give them some idea and give them some culture because too much of our young children are being killed too much of them are in the prison especially people of color and the black people of color the caribbean americans from whichever where you're coming from they are all in the jail as i say this is the modernized slavery mm. return back uh, into our community and into our thing and it's so nice that you read wrote a book and it has a black person people of color <laughs> representing that people of color should read it and try because if we don't do not try to bring our society back together we will not be able to bring it forward so i thank Absolutely. you very much Absolutely and i so. know that the, the jews have their culture we people of color should keep our culture thank you very much for being on our um our program the time is running out to being with us and to sharing your views and your ideas of um the um the, the mailbox syndrome i do hope that i'm able to have you to come back again and to continue this talking with us because this is very interesting and very interested that um, our children should know, and this book should be in school. Not only here, but it should be in schools for them to understand what it is really about and to have the I think we don't write books to our community. We don't write books to our children. We don't write books to, to the black community so that they can understand what is going on in their life and educate them more about things we look at other books and if it had a white picture it would have been selling because they would have gone and say oh it's a white person right this soon this is what we need to know and this is what the book is need to go out there and to be more into the um culture so thank you once again for being with us thank you for sharing your views thank you again thank you very much you are watching Thoughts and Teas in Focus, and our topic today was on the mailbox syndrome, and this is where we are focusing on our community and um, having our parents who, you know, parents to, to be in more control of their home. If the parents do not control you, the police will surely do. And I think you prefer your parents to have control than you have the police, because the police is not going to make no joke. If your parents can't control it, they know how to control you. So keep tuning in to our program. And to, to uh, Mr. Mr. Arjun, the attorney Arjun, will return once again and to give us more information on his books that he's right. He's an author. And it is the mailbox syndrome. That was Thoughts and Teens in Focus. Goodbye from Thoughts and Teens in Focus.